Earlier this week, Rihanna grabbed global headlines when she posted this viral tweet. Why aren't we talking about this? Hashtag farmers protest with a link to a CNN article about the Indian government shutting down the internet around the capital, New Delhi, where there have been largely peaceful protests by farmers, some violent. The Indian government's reaction or overreaction to Rihanna's tweet didn't really help their cause. The foreign ministry huffed the temptation of sensationalist social media hashtags and others is neither accurate nor responsible. And Indian police, I kid you not, have filed a case against climate activist Greta Thunberg for also daring to tweet in support of the farmers. Rihanna's right. We should be talking about all this. So let's talk about it. Because there is shared DNA between what's happening in India and what we've experienced in the US under Trump. Millions of Indian farmers and labor groups across the country have been protesting against what they say are three pro-corporate, anti-worker agricultural bills passed by the right-wing BJP government of Narendra Modi. It's part of Prime Minister Modi's bid to further liberalize and grow the Indian economy. But farm workers say the new laws will make it easier for corporations to exploit their industry and drive down prices. Already hundreds of thousands of farmers and farm laborers have committed suicide in the past 30 years over crushing poverty and debt. Hence these protests, which at one point were being described as the single largest protest in human history, upward of 250 million people on strike in a single day. But look, Whatever your views are on the protesters' demands, and personally, I think putting India's hard-hit farmers at the mercy of global corporations probably isn't the wisest move right now. It's the Indian government response to the protests that should concern us. Everyone from the United Nations to international human rights groups have urged Modi to respect peaceful protests. Though it's worth pointing out that Amnesty International can't even operate in India anymore. And journalists covering the protests have been arrested, and the farmers themselves have been smeared as anti-national, as foreign-backed, as enemies of the state. And by the way, unlike in the US, where Hollywood stars were front and center in the hashtag resistance to Trump, in India, Bollywood stars have lined up behind Modi. The multi-award-winning actress Kangana Ranaut tweeted back at Rihanna, calling her a dummy and calling the farmers terrorists charming. And look, this goes beyond farmers' protests. Indian democracy's descent into authoritarianism has accelerated in recent years. The right-wing nationalist government of Narendra Modi has revoked the special status of Indian state Jammu and Kashmir and locked up hundreds of Kashmiris, mainly Muslims, without trial. It's passed a law offering a path to citizenship for refugees and undocumented immigrants as long as they're not Muslim. And it's building detention camps in the state of Assam for Indian citizens accused of being illegal immigrants. Again, mostly Muslims. On Modi's watch, according to Freedom House, the world's biggest democracy is now one of the world's least free democracies, drawing comparisons to China and getting rapidly less free by the year. Why should this matter to us in America, aside from for the obvious moral reasons? Well, remember, Trumpism didn't come out of a vacuum. There is a far-right authoritarian movement that is globally on the march. Modi and his right-wing nationalist governing party, the BJP, are as much part of that, if not more so, as Trump and the modern GOP. In fact, Modi himself was a lifelong volunteer for a Hindu nationalist paramilitary group called the RSS, which was inspired by the Nazis and other European fascist parties. Trump, of course, embraced Narendra Modi. He rolled out the red carpet for him to massive fanfare at the Howdy Modi rally in Houston, Texas in 2019. And a year ago this month, Trump happened to be in New Delhi as Hindu nationalist mobs and police attacked and killed Muslim protesting, Muslims protesting against the citizenship law. But Trump didn't offer one word of condemnation. The thing is, Obama, to his shame, was hugging Modi long before Trump arrived on the scene. So the question is, what will Joe Biden do? He said in his big foreign policy speech today that American diplomacy has to be about defending freedom and upholding universal rights. But it's easy to call for that when you're discussing adversaries like Russia or Iran. What about when it's a close ally like India? And to be clear, I'm not calling for some sort of anti-India foreign policy just a pro-democracy, pro-universal rights one. Because I'm the child of Indians. I love that country, just as I love this country. But it's because I love America and it's because I love India 
that I will always speak out against the rise of far-right authoritarianism, whether it's the Muslim extremist variety, the white nationalist variety, or in this case, the Hindu nationalist variety. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.